welcome everybody. Um, I'm so excited to have you here as our next online meetup um, for the Female Financial Freedom uh, Group. I'm just going to switch the gallery so I can see everybody. Okay. And um, yeah, today we have the amazing Julia Jeki talking for us and teaching us 10 ways to double your sales without feeling salesy. So I'll tell you a bit more about Jules um, shortly, but for those of you who are new to my world, I am Michelle Bloom, the money mentor. I am a financial advisor and part owner of Essential Planner which is a holistic financial planning firm and we specialize in helping everyday Aussies have a worry-free retirement using wholesale superannuation products that return around 4% higher um, than the industry funds which can double your retirement nest egg. I am also a money mindset and money breakthrough business coach and my journey started uh, about um, nine years ago, I think I got my qualifications. I was doing um, financial advising at the time. Um, and prior to that, I had been a um, international sales trainer, which is why I love this topic Julia is going to be talking about. But feeling a bit of a void, I wanted to give back to a bit of community and um, just that realisation that we get through that midlife crisis when we uh, discover that having everything um, financially and um, externally um, doesn't always fill that void. There was something more. And so I went and got my um, coaching qualifications. And unfortunately, about two years after that, after my um, ex-husband and I had uh, built a seven-figure business together, um, he decided to fly the coop with um, somebody half my age and I lost everything. So uh, what we call, I love to call uh, sexually transmitted debt. Lost the home that I had purchased as a single mother um, with my, um, raising my, had, raising my two kids, lost the seven figure business. And I ended up living in a caravan in my parents' front yard in Melbourne. I had to go home to Melbourne with my tail between my legs and, um, recover both financially and emotionally. I had been left broke and broken. And that is why I'm so passionate about helping other women to protect themselves financially. Um, from these unexpected situations that could um, leave us sort of in dire straits financially and also um, having a lifestyle passion filled business that allows you to create life on your terms as well as financial freedom and I do that via uh, my money makeover mastermind which covers the three pillars of female financial freedom Pillar one is money mindset mastery because we all have these, um, you know, money mindset monsters hiding under the um, under the desk that can be holding us back from uh, creating financial freedom um, for ourselves. And they will show up in things like um, undercharging, not asking for the sale, not wanting to talk about money, immediately discounting, not chasing up. Um, invoices that you're owed, not being able to have courageous money conversations with uh, partners or JVs or all sorts of different ways that can show up for you. So pillar two is the bust through the glass income ceiling and start charging your worth. So that's all about getting through that, um, that level of income that we can all struggle to hit. And unfortunately, as we grow and as we uh, increase our income, we still get to that level. It's not a one-stop shop where you can do it once and then just, hey, all good, you know. Um, I experienced it myself when um, I'd always been a multiple six-figure earner. And so when I went from sort of 200 to 300,000, um, really had to up-level um, there and going just from 300 to 500, it was just boom, boom, boom. And I kept self-sabotaging and burning bridges and just shutting everything down with um, and self-sabotaging because I wasn't ready yet to get through that next um, that next income level. Then pillar three is money management uh, mastery, which is reducing your debt, uh, empowered spending, um, knowing your numbers in your business, uh, planning for uh, retirement and creating wealth outside super so you can have a beautiful lifestyle now. 
So if anybody would like some further information on that, um, just drop um, uh, Mastermind in the chat and I can do a Sacred Money's Archetypes uh, assessment with you and uh, also a discovery session to tell you a little bit more about the, um, the program. Sacred Money Archetypes is basically your money personality type. It's very similar if you've ever done a Myers-Briggs or an extended disc personality profiling, except this is all about money. And there's eight different types and each one has its gifts, each one has its challenges and each one has its particular money mindset. Um, so you're able to use those to play to your strengths rather than um, self-sabotaging and creating self-judgment um, and beating yourself up. Okay, now we have this lovely lady here who I can't, we need to change the name. Um, somebody who hasn't got their camera on, uh, white, white top, beautiful blonde hair and a gorgeous smile. I don't know your name because we're having a tech problem. If you're able to hit um, over in the right column where the three dots are and change it to rename and just pop your correct name in, that would be awesome. Um, maybe a good idea. Leanne to just actually pop that in the chat so that everybody can see that instructions. Okay. Hey Kylie, how are you going? Okay, awesome. Okie dokie. So as I said, today we have the uh, gorgeous Julia who um, from Sales Insight Edge and Julia and I met through a business mastermind that we're both a part of and uh, I just love what Jules does because I'm so passionate about sales myself, being an extra, uh, you know, an ex-sales um, professional, and seeing so many of even my own clients that you know um, struggle with the sales side of thing. And we are always in. So if you're in business, you're in sales. That's it. Um, and one of the biggest challenges is having those sales conversations and having high converting sales conversations without feeling salesy. So Jules has been a sales professional for. Uh, around 20 years now and was uh, corporate sales and has just done an amazing job with her business that you've grown so quick and your clients are getting such amazing results. So I'm really looking forward to this as I'm sure you all are. So without further ado, Jules, I will hand over to you. I think you're already unmuted. Yep. Uh, excellent. Oh, just sorry. One more thing. Um, so that we don't get Jules off track. Um, if she asks you any questions or whatever, just answer through the, the chat. But if you can write down any questions so we're not, uh, she's not going off track and all the rest of it. And we will have a 10 minute Q&A to answer those questions at the um, at the end so that we're not yeah, going backwards and forwards um, all the time. And we will have lucky door prizes at the end as well, which Julia also has one for you as well. So awesome. Excellent. OK, thanks, Jules. Over to you. No worries. Thanks, Michelle. And I put my timer on because I'm a true sales rep and I can talk underwater. So I'm going to make sure that I keep my timer on here. Um, so thanks, Michelle, for the introduction. Yes, I've been in sales, so don't hate me, but I've been in sales for the last 20 years. And I know everyone hates a sales rep until you start your own business. And then you go, oh, that's a skill I really need to learn, right? Because we need to learn how to bring money into our business. And the truth is, if you're not bringing money into the business, you don't get to keep doing what you love. And my absolute purpose in life is to empower everyone to keep doing what they love because I know that when you do what you love just like when I do what I love that we get to make a difference in the lives of those around us and that's going to be the life of your clients that's going to be the life of your family members you know that legacy that you leave for your family that you know what you don't have to have a crappy job that you hate that Monday mornings are a dread you can actually get up and do something you love every single day and you know, not only does it make a difference in everyone, the lives of those people around you, but also in your own life. Like I, you know, I think it's kind of a driver, which sounds really morbid to me, but it's such a driver that lying on my deathbed, I want to be able to say, I did what I loved my whole life. You know, I didn't give up and I kept going because this is what I really enjoy doing. And honestly, for me, empowering people to learn not just how to sell, but how to get comfortable selling and in a way that doesn't feel salesy, that feels really authentic to you. That's really my passion because I know that when you feel that way, you'll keep doing it, right? And it doesn't mean that you're going to feel that way from the first time you get out and sell. I'm absolutely, I was absolutely not a natural salesperson. And even today, I still, I love this conversation with Michelle because 
you know, Michelle and I have these conversations about, but what about this? Or what about this? So how do we improve that? How do we improve that? And the very first thing I did as a, when I started my business a year and a half ago was to employ a sales coach. I was like, right, there's got to be someone who's better at this than me. I'm always willing to learn. So for me, it was, you know, how can I find that person who's better than I am so that I'm continually learning? So today is all about how we can double your sales. And these are lots of different strategies and some of them are going to be really practical that you're going to be able to go, okay, right, I'm going to go away and do that right now. Other, others are going to be things that you need to go and think about because the truth is what I combine is strategies. So 20 years of working in sales across media, pharmaceutical, medical, um, mostly in the medical industry where I've been trained to the hills on how to sell. So, you know, that's the real sales side of that. But the piece that really lights me up is actually the mindset and it's the coaching piece. So some of the pieces that we'll talk to talk about today are a little bit of both of those worlds, because the truth is I can give you all the best sales strategies in the world, but if your head is not there, you don't want to do it, guess what? None of these are going to work. Right. So we've got to make sure that you've got your mindset in the right place to be able to actually go and action all of these things. All right. So what I'm going to do is try and share my screen. And Leanne, am I able to do that? Oh, I can. That's a bit exciting. Here we go. Help if I. Sorry, give me two seconds. This is not wanting. I just made your co-host still so it oh, should work. Awesome. Thank you. Let's make sure. <laughs> Here we go. All right. Okay. So we're going to go through as many of these 10 ways as we can, and I'm going to make it really practical for you. If we don't get through all of them, um, then I am more than happy to email you a copy of the PDF as well. Can everyone see my screen? Yeah, cool. All right. So the first thing um, I want you to do is a really practical piece, and I want you just to write down on a piece of paper how much you are earning every month right now. So on your notebook or wherever you've got your, um, whatever you're writing on, write down for me and let me know in the chat when you've done. If you write down just your average kind of monthly, you don't have to tell us what it is, just write it down for yourself. But just let me know in the chat when you've done that. Beautiful, good work. Nice one. Beautiful. All right. So now all you need to do is double it. So let's double that figure. Okay, so make sure you've written that down. Once you've written it down, I want you to give me a one word emotion in the chat how you feel about that doubled figure. One word emotion, how you feel about that doubled figure. I can see that frustration, Jenny. <laughs> ah, Shakira, I thought it was you. <laughs> you managed to change the name. <laughs> Yeah, scary. Okay, we've got some excited. I like the excited. Frustrated. Who else? We've got some excited. What other one word emotion have we got? Worthwhile. I like that. Interesting. Awesome. All right. So what we're going to do is move forward to one of the very first strategies that I have around doubling your sales. And the reason I ask for the emotion that you're feeling is that you need to 100% wholeheartedly believe that you can achieve this, right? We absolutely wholeheartedly need to believe that we can achieve this. And it is my number one strategy. And I'm about going to show you why. I can be very clever and... 
show you a little diagram that makes will help you to understand why it's so important to wholeheartedly believe in this number. All right, can you see my screen? Okay, now you have to forgive me because my pen did not come with an auto spelling correct. So if I spell something incorrectly, it's not my fault. All right, this is why we need to believe it. This is a lovely little model called the iceberg model. Here is our water line. No laughing at my drawings. So what happens when we usually go about trying to achieve something? So especially going about achieving a sales result like this. And this is what I used to always see as a sales rep in the pharmaceutical industry and no matter what business I was in, the first thing we would do is we would have a look at our results, right? And we'd go, okay, we want to earn, I don't know, whatever your figure is, say $20,000 a month in the business, right? And then we would have a look. The next thing we have a look at are our actions. So what most companies would do is they would say, right, we want our sales reps to see more people. We want to qualify the people that they're seeing. So we tier them. We make them an A target, a B target, or a C target. And we make sure we know, you know, if they're an A target, that means they have high potential. If they're a B target, they're sort of average potential. And if they're a C target there, you don't need to see too many times, but you still might make some money out of them, right? This is how most organizations work, is that we look above the surface. We look at our result we want, and we look at the actions, and we try and change our actions. But the truth is there's so much that sits underneath the surface of actually being able to take action and get the right results that you want. And what sits underneath the surface is Our circumstances, so what has happened to us in the past, drive our thoughts, right? Drive our thinking. There's an amazing book by uh, Viktor Frankl who talks about this space in between our circumstances and our thoughts, and he calls this our freedom. Because we have the freedom to choose how we think about things that happen to us, right? So we have the freedom to think about situations that have happened to us. We can choose that thought pattern. That's our freedom. Our thoughts drive our emotions and our emotions drive our actions. So I want you to think about when we talk about belief, this is our thought pattern, right? Our belief equals our thoughts. So if you are thinking I don't know how to do this. I'm scared. This is frustrating me and annoying. Guess what? <laughs> it changes your emotions. Your emotions change your actions. Your actions change your results, right? Because you know it. When you're feeling frustrated, you're not going to be picking up the phone and being really excited to get in front of customers. You're not going to be out there doing everything that it takes to drive your business forward when you're sitting in this place of frustration. So the piece we need to really work on is this belief zone and it's changing the thought patterns in our mind. So it's one of the things that I work with clients on is constantly thinking about and constantly being able to, we call it reframing, reframe the thoughts that are in our head because we have to have the right thoughts in order to drive those emotions of excitement, of willingness, of eagerness, of optimism, right? They're the thoughts and the emotions that we need in order to have the actions, to be able to take action, in order to get the results. Am I making sense for everyone? Yeah? Cool. All right, just shoot me a question or unmute and let me know if it's not making sense. All right, so that's my first strategy for you is really leaning into and learning to believe that you can achieve those results. The next piece that is critically important, hands up, has anyone heard of Simon Sinek? Yep, some people have heard of Simon Sinek. Okay. So Simon Sinek's work is a breadth of work that I use a lot with my coaching clients. And if you haven't, I would highly recommend you go and have a look at his TED Talk. It was done about 12 years ago now. I keep saying 12 years, and I've been saying that for about three years. It's probably 15 years ago. Um, 
it was done a long time ago, but it is so relevant today. And truly what he talks about is the power of knowing your purpose. And the power in knowing our purpose is that, I'm going to draw this for you again, because it'll help you to, it'll kind of help to make sense. The power in purpose comes to, um, it kind of works with the way our brain works. And I'm neuroscience, right? So my coaching is all around neuroscience. So that's why I found this really fascinating. So he talks about what he calls the golden circle. And we have the why, the how, and the what. So what we know is that most organizations on the planet know what they do, right? I sell this, I, this is my service, this is my product. We know what we do. Some organizations on the planet are good at explaining how they do things. You know, that's what we call the unique selling proposition or, um, you know, it might be the marketing key terms that organizations use. And there are some who are really good at doing that. But there are very few organizations on the planet who are really good at explaining their why, their purpose, their deeper meaning. And this is the piece that we absolutely critically need to be able to convert clients, or to be able to help clients make a decision about us. And so one of the key organizations that he talks about is Apple. So when you ask people why you're loyal to Apple over an Android, and you know, like if you're an Apple person, you're never changing. This is why people who are Apple people will line up for hours to get the new devices. Not so much now, but I think, you know, in the past when they released products, people would line up for hours to get their products. It was because they had this emotional connection with people. They were so good at really selling people on their purpose. They were like, you know, they were the challenging the status quo. They were the doing things differently. They were the, we don't care about the competition. We don't care what anyone else is doing. This is about us and the life that we want to create. So the reason this is so powerful is that this piece of why actually relates to a part of our brain in the center of our brain, which is called the limbic brain. Now, the interesting thing about the limbic brain is that it has no capacity for language. So you can sell people, you can give them your products, your services, your prices, and that's going to appeal to the prefrontal cortex. because this part of our brain is analytical. It's about, it's got language. But this part of the brain that makes decisions is only emotion. This is the part of the brain that makes decisions about us. It's our, the part of our brain that goes, oh, I love it, I'm taking it, right? It's when you think about brands that you really love, that no matter what they do wrong, you still won't leave them because you love them. You've got that connection with them and you've connected with them on that place. So that's why for me, the second piece in doubling your sales is really getting clear on what your purpose is and learning how to communicate with it. Because as soon as you can communicate, you start with your why, you can communicate from that piece, you're allowing people to make a decision about you, right? When you just give them all your products, your features, your prices, all they're going to do is compare it to someone else. And they go, well, I don't know, it's just confusing. They all look the same to me. How do I make a decision? We make a decision on whichever one feels better, whichever one feels right. And the way we do that is by figuring out and communicating with our why. Making sense? I'm going to do a quick check in the chat. Love him. Yeah, me too. <laughs> awesome. All right. So let's come on to strategy number three. All right. Strategy number three is a really easy one. It's your pricing. So this is, and I think this is something that Michelle talked about as well, is that one of the really important and key things that I've done both as a sales rep, when I've seen businesses do this, but also as a business owner, is really to get a good understanding of where your pricing sits in the market. And unfortunately, for most women, and I don't know, Michelle, you might be able to chime in and tell me where this comes from, but for most women, we tend to underprice ourselves. And that can come back to a value piece. There can be a lot of things sitting behind that. But the truth is just small increments in your pricing can make a really significant difference down the line. And it's something that I have always worked really hard on is truly leaning into and understanding the value that I deliver for people. And I can tell you, you know, within my business alone, when I first started in the business, I think I was charging about $50 an hour. And a year and a half down the track, I'm now charging $500 an hour. 
So it, for me, it was this incredible journey of really, you know, starting from this place of, and I knew the $50 an hour was completely undervaluing where I was, but I needed that to build my confidence. And sometimes that's the piece. But once you have that confidence and then you can really, I recommend to all of you to start having a look around at what's in the market. And I'm telling you, you don't need to be the cheapest in the market. If you can figure out a way to add more value to your clients, you absolutely do not need to be. And it's something I, in fact, discourage is discounting and trying to be the cheapest in the market. Because if you're attracting people who only want the cheapest product, that's what they will do. They will spend their life chasing the cheapest product. They don't become a loyal customer for you, right? So you don't, in fact, and one of my coaches, I remember her saying to me, my sales coaches, she said to me, I don't ever want to be the cheapest in the market. I'm happy not to be the most expensive, but I want to be really up high in where I'm sitting. And that was a big piece for me. So I tell you that pricing is a really quick and easy way to double your prices, double your sales, I should say. But I know that there's often a bit of work that needs to go behind that. So have a think about where your pricing is at is at at the moment. And maybe that's a space that you need to reach out to Michelle to as well in helping you to understand that money mindset and really charging your value. All right, the next piece in doubling your sales is really starting to have a good look at your packages. So who of you guys, can I see a show of hands or even a thumbs up um, in your, a thumbs up in your reactions? Who sells packages at the moment or do you sell one-off products? You can let me know in the chat. Yeah, packages only, awesome. Yeah, Tony, a little bit of both, beautiful. Okay, so uh, I'm not sure what you mean by packages. All right, Jen, do you wanna come off mute for a second? Sure. Jenny, what do you sell? Hi. <laughs> Hello. Um, so two things, either uh, three-month coaching, well, the <laughs> package, <laughs> um, yeah. or a, well, it, didn't, it didn't, for me, it feels like a one-off thing because it's yeah. one sale, you work with them for three months, but there's nothing, I don't have anything at this point in time for them to go on to necessarily other than to re-sign for coaching. Yep. Um, and then the other thing I have is a six-week program that I've put together. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so when I talk about packages, that's exactly what I'm talking about. So it's that three-month package that you've got, and it depends on, you know, what your inclusions are in there. So one of the things that I would say to everyone, so regardless of whether you're selling products or you're selling services, is really starting to think about how can you bundle your things together? So especially for product-based businesses, um, we often get into the mindset that a customer only wants to buy one thing or another thing, but truthfully, one of my clients... I'm not going to say she doubled her, she didn't double because she was on a super high, um, the business had a super high turnover, but I can't remember the exact numbers, but it absolutely went crazy when she went from selling individual products to packaging 10 things together. And when she first thought about packaging those 10 things together, she was like, oh my goodness, no one is ever going to spend that much. At the moment, you know, this is their maximum spend. And all of a sudden we were making their maximum spend sitting in that 50 to $200 mark. And she thought no one would ever do it. And it absolutely exploded her sales. But I think it's also possible in the coaching, like if you're in a coaching world and you're selling the packages, is making sure that you've thought about what you can add into those packages. So then you might have different tiers. So for example, um, you might have a VIP package, you might have a platinum package, you might have a silver package, so that you're allowing people to self-select, you know, where they fit into. And I think one of the other things that you brought up then, Jenny, that is really important is making sure you've got somewhere for people to go to. So once they've finished that three months with you, what's the next step for them? And one of the things that um, I think is really important, even as people come on the coaching journey with you, is that you start listening to what they need next. And that's where, if you haven't created it yet, that's where you'll start to think about, oh, this is the next level I need to take them to. And the reason I say that is that it costs five times more to acquire new customers than it does to retain existing customers, right? Five times more to get new than it does to retain existing. And the truth is, once you've already sold them and they're already doing the work with you, so whether a product or service, they're already with you, they already love you, then they're much more likely to stay with you. All right, so it's just about figuring out what is that next step in the journey for them.
And that's why I say packages are absolutely one of the fundamental ways to double your sales because you're not just having to search for new clients. You're also working with all of those existing clients that you've got. And this might just be, you know, for, as coaches and creators, we tend to we tend to have a lot going on in the background. You know, we've got a lot of ideas and a lot of things that we could actually bundle together so that you, know, you could make those tiers in your business. So you could have those different tiers that people could buy into, but then also making sure you've got a flow on. And it's a bit of the funnel, you know, when we work on sales funnels, it's making sure you've got that funnel in your business. All right, let's have a look at our next strategy. So our next strategy, oh, my favorite, Puff. <laughs> This is one, and you're going to have to pardon the um, pun language. One of my very good friends gave me this. This is Phoebe gave me this, Michelle. Do you want to know what PUFF stands for? Pick up the effing phone. <laughs> and this is my favourite because picking up the phone is one of the fundamental ways to get clients into your business. And I know we're all afraid of talking to people these days. All we want to do is send an email or a text message because it's safe and no one has to talk to me or has to reject me. And the truth is picking up the phone is the fastest way to cut through all the noise right now. There is so much noise out there and it's emails like I don't know about you guys but I get no short of a hundred emails a day direct messages now direct messaging is a strategy that I use but I also get so many direct mess messages a day so picking up the phone and actually talking to people is absolutely key and it doesn't have to be cold calling look I love cold calling because I actually <laughs> I have learned how to flip my mindset and for me cold calling is an adventure to me you can see one of my skis in the background I'm a snow skier so adventure is my life but for me, cold calling is an adventure because I get to meet amazing people. And I can tell you right now, I've never, ever had someone hang up on me, swear at me, or be rude to me over the phone, ever. On a DM, absolutely. Direct cold messages, people swear at me. People are so rude on a direct message. I still do it though, right? Because I love ruffling feathers. But I'm telling you right now, picking up the phone is the number one way to get business really quickly. Okay, so there's a couple of different ways. Cold calling is absolutely one of them. And cold calling is really easy these days. Google has been amazing to us if you're trying to go cold call people because especially if you're in the business to business space, you can really quickly Google people's businesses or you can find them on Facebook, like find the business on Facebook, go into Google, find their number, pick up the phone and talk to people. It's really cool. Now, if you don't want to do cold calling, the other way is that um, you can do warm calling, right? So let's say you go to networking events. It might be, so I don't know, how many of you guys are in Brisbane? Anyone in Brisbane or Queensland? Yeah, a few. Yep. So for example, um, I don't know if you guys came to, but on the Gold Coast, there was a Gold Coast Small Business Expo. There's another one in Brisbane in, I think it's on the 6th. So it's in a couple of days time. Networking events, so good, right? You could walk around and get a business card from every single business or everyone that's relevant to you in that small business expo. There's also a speed networking, that's like speed dating, speed networking event where you can also get lots of contacts. So then once you've got the contacts, it's not necessarily a cold call. It's a, hey, we met at blah, blah, blah. Do you want to have a quick chat? So one of the strategies that I absolutely teach clients is how to make those calls, how to make the cold calls, how to make the warm calls. And sometimes it's even your hot leads. How many of you guys have got people that you could pick up the phone to tomorrow who already know you, who already love you, who've already done a little bit of work with you, but we've lost them to follow up, right? So sometimes it's just in that space of the follow up. So you, when you pick up the phone, it can go everywhere from cold all the way to hot. But I promise you, picking up the phone is the fastest way to get results. Emails, you might get a response in two days, three days, week, who knows. Direct messages, we do get responses pretty quickly with direct messages if you do it in the right way, but phone calls are the best way. All you need to do there is work out how to flip your mindset if it's something that you don't enjoy doing. All right, so this leads me on to follow-up, which I briefly touched on. So what we know, and this statistic, I think, Michelle, we were talking about this the other day because your statistics are slightly different to the general population, but they say that 80% of business is done after the fifth follow-up, and that is with seasoned, um, that statistic came from sales reps, right? So what they're saying is that 
we are closing some business, but we're leaving so much of it out. We're leaving it behind. So those people who maybe don't get back to you, are you following up until you get a hard no? And have you got an automated system for following up until you get that hard no? And remember, hard no is just a no today. It's not a no tomorrow. It's not a no for six months. It's just a, no, it's not quite right for me right now. No worries. How do we bring those people into our vortex and into our world in a way that we don't need to, you know, necessarily keep doing business with them today, but we can come back and contact them later on down the track. Make sense? Who's got some follow-ups? Hand up. Who's got some follow-ups they could do? Yeah, a few follow-ups there. Good. All right. So stop selling and start solving. This was a really interesting one for me. So when I first started working in the pharmaceutical industry, I think I was just so nervous that I did what I would always call the verbal diarrhea, right? I'd get in front of a customer and I'd be like, what? Here's everything I know. Let me just spit it all out to you and then you figure out what you need and I'll just walk away. And I find that that can often be the case for business owners when we first start selling or when we're getting in front of more customers. Sometimes it's just about, oh, I just want to get everything down on the table. But the truth is, and where the gold is, is really spending much more time listening, right? The true value in sales is actually the more listening you can do. So in order to listen, we need to ask the right questions. So we need to find out what are people's challenges? Do they actually need you or not? They might not. I had a conversation with a lady today. She's like, yeah, I think I want to get on a call with you. And I said, all right, so what are you struggling with your sales? She said, I'm not struggling with anything. I was like, oh, okay, why are we getting on a call? Because <laughs> I'm sales, right? If you don't have any challenges with your sales, we don't need to talk, right? So we've got to find out what are people's challenges? Where are they at right now? And the more you can understand about people, and there's something, a little trick that I like to do is I like to ask why a few times. And it can feel a little bit, uh, it can feel a little bit confronting to ask why a few times over. But the truth is, the more you ask why, the deeper you will get into understanding where your customer or your client is. So for example, if I ask them about their sales, all right, where are you struggling with your sales at the moment? Well, we're not hitting our targets. I might say, okay, well, why is it important for you to hit your targets? Well, I don't hit my targets and I can't pay my team. Okay, so why is it important that we're paying our team? Well, it makes sense, right? That we want, oh, I've got, sorry, someone coming in. Um, it makes sense that we want the business to be running. Okay, so why do we want the business to be running? So you can see the more I ask why, we're starting to get to a bit of a deeper level. So wanting to pay the staff is very top line. There's a deeper piece under that. And that deeper piece usually comes back to someone's purpose. So that's why I like to keep asking why so we can dig a little bit deeper. And when I can understand what your purpose is and what really drives you, then I can figure out if I've got a solution. Then I can figure out if you're the right person who's actually going to go and put my, my solutions in place. So not everyone is going to be the right person. And this is about you standing strong in what you're delivering for people as well. But it's also about really uncovering what their needs are. So that's my little, my little tip for you is ask why as many times as you can. And I'm not going to lie to you. I've asked it up to seven times before and I've had tears, right? When you start going that deep, there's a process called seven levels deep and you get to seven levels, you start to really uncover what, what is important for someone. And that's an important place to know because once you know that, you know how hard they're going to work. You know if they're really invested in what you're doing and if they're going to get the results, right? All right, so I can see my time is up. So what I'm going to do is I'll stop the share. Now, you guys can all have access to this document. So there are another three ways on here that you can double your sales. And I think Michelle said she's got your email addresses. So we'll just send that PDF out to you. But while we've got a little bit of time... Jules, you still got five minutes oh, still um, oh, cool. till quarter two, and then we'll go Q&A. Awesome. All right. My timer was going off. I did tell you I could talk underwater. Um, all right. So let's go. Oh, I like this one. This is one of my fun ones. Let's reverse engineer your numbers. <clears throat> all right. I am going to do this on a whiteboard. Okay. And I'm going to make it easy for myself. and put my calculator out. Okay, so 
so let's reverse engineer your numbers. All right, so let's say at the very beginning of our session, you decided that you wanted to earn, I'm going to use 20 because that just makes everything confusing. Let's go, you want to do $10,000 months, right? Oops. And let's say you have a package that is $500 a package that is $1,000 and a package that is $2,000. So now we wanna figure out, and you probably know, you know, once you know what your packages are, you know what you naturally sell more of. Most people naturally sell more of their middle package. So let's say we sell, um, and I'm gonna play with this a little bit. Let's do, Two of these, three maybe. No, all right, let's make this one. Maybe we'll do five of these. Okay, so you get the picture, right? So start, what I want to see you doing is start writing down what was your goal and what are your packages, right? So what are your package dollar amounts? And let's play with the numbers to see how many you need of each, how many you need to sell of each of your packages. Okay, so then this one's obviously 3,000 and that one is two and that's not going to be enough. So let's make this one oh, we don't even need that many of that one. Let's just do one of that. Let's make that one four. All right, who can do the maths faster than me? Come on. Oh, it's only hitting us at eight and a half. All right, so what if we sell two of these? That gives us four. And ten, there we go. Okay, so let's overachieve on it. All right, so once you know your numbers now, right, you know that you need to sell five of your $500 package, you need to sell four of your $1,000 package, and you need to sell two of your $2,000 package. So it's really just breaking it down into those numbers. And these are going to be our key numbers that we use to have a look at how many people we need to be speaking to. So one of the things that I really like to get you to figure out is what is your conversion rate? Now, often our conversion rate will change. So from a cold audience, the conversion is depends on the person. Again, Michelle's much higher at this. So um, most people have a cold conversion at about 30%. A warm conversion can sit at about 50%. And a hot conversion usually is going to sit somewhere around that 80%. So that's someone who already loves you or this might also be a referral client. Okay, so what we then need to figure out is how many people do we need to be speaking to in order to hit these numbers? Okay, so if you already know that you have a heap of warm leads and you're going to go, you know what, I'm not contacting anyone cold. It's not my thing just yet because I'll get you there one day. It's not my thing, but we know that we've got about a 50% conversion then we know we need to speak to at least 10 of these people, at least eight of these people, and at least four of these people. Am I making sense? 
So you need to know from what your numbers are, how many you need to speak to knowing your conversion rate. So this is how we reverse engineer your numbers. So it makes it really simple. And then you get to design your sales strategy or your marketing strategy around those numbers. Am I making sense? Yeah, I'm seeing some nods, maybe some, maybe some blank screens. So that's okay. I'm going to take that as your yes. <laughs> But this is really just about making sure that you're clear on what your numbers are. And this is one of the things in sales and selling is that when you can start to get clear on your numbers, you can start to figure out how aggressive you need to be in your, in your marketing piece and how much you need to be getting in front of people. And I think this is something that a lot of business owners overlook is recognizing that connection between how many you need to be selling and how much marketing, advertising, selling, you know, in the selling strategies that you need to be really implementing. All right, how am I going for time, Michelle? Oh, you're on mute, sorry. Uh, yep, we can go Q&A now. Perfect. All right, so I'm going to stop my screen share. So have I bamboozled or confused anyone? And if I have, now's your time to let me know. No. Does anyone have any questions specific to your business? Happy to help. Yeah, go for it, Jenny. Oh, thank you so much. Um, I get all of that. Where I get stuck normally is how to how to have that conversation, essentially. So um, if, you know, if I was talking to a warm lead and I have these programs that I'm going to sell, how do I even get into that conversation? Okay, so did you say they're warm? Yep. Yep. Okay, so this is often, and I don't know how you sell into your packages, but I can tell you how I do it. So for me, I don't ever try to sell anything over the phone in that first pick up the phone. For me, it's just about making a, having a meeting because the first time you pick up the phone for, to someone, it can often be, um, you know, you don't know what they're up to. They could be in the middle of doing something. Like I've had people and I've said to them, is now a good time? They're like, well, I've got shopping on both arms and a kid holding onto my leg. I'm like, how did you even pick up the phone? Like, what? So for me, that first point of contact is just about getting an appointment on the calendar, right? So we just want to be able to book time with them. And especially if you've got a three-month coaching package that I'm going to guess is, you know, somewhere over that $500 mark. And sometimes it depends on your price point. I've got clients who can sell over the phone because their price point's only about $70, $70 or $80. And that's a fairly easy thing to do over the phone. But if it's anywhere over, I would say that $100 to $200 mark, then it's probably worth your time getting them into an appointment. So for me, it's just jumping them into that next appointment. And for me, I follow a bit of a strategy, which I think I was teaching some girls the other day. Um, let me see if I can just quickly share this with you as well. Okay. So for me, it's number one, obviously it's just an introduction. If they already know you, um, so I was going to give you my cold calling strategy. So if they already know you, you can introduce. So what I don't want you doing is having to do a whole sales pitch over the phone. What you want to do is really shorten it down to something short and sweet, but we do want to make sure we give them results. So it might be something like, hi, my name, hi, hi it's Jenny. How are you? Um, hey, I wanted to give you a call today or just check in, you know, it's now a good time to chat. I want to give you a quick call. I'm just introducing this new program. I've seen some incredible results people have had. So number three is your results. Mm -hmm. Some of my clients have seen X, Y, Z. I know I've put you on the spot though. Do you want to have a quick chat about it? Is that something you're interested in? Do you want to have a quick chat about it at a later date? Yeah. Actually, we forgot to put in here. Interest, right? So we want to know if they're interested. Now, obviously, not going to get multiple call if they're not interested. But the way we pick their interest is with the results. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's an introduction. Look, I've just launched, might be, you know, I've just launched this new three month package. Um, I have put a couple of clients through it and I've seen some incredible results. And regardless of whether you work in, like, obviously, I'm in sales, so I can do a numbers thing. But you know, I do this with, I work with life coaches as well. And it might be, you know, I work with people who are feeling really stuck and confused on, not even confused, but they're feeling really stuck in where they are in life at the moment and how to balance that with their workspace. And they've been able to move to this place of just feeling freedom and confidence on and taking control of their life. 
So that's when I would say, you know, is that something that would interest you? Would you be interested in jumping on a quick 20 minute call? And I can explain a little bit more about it. Yeah. Okay. So it's just about introducing yourself. Obviously, if it's a warm call, they already know who you are. Introducing whatever it is that it is that you want to sell to them. So whether it's a new package or um, product, whatever that might be. Letting them know some results. So the results are really the what's in it for me. And that's what spikes people's interest. That's why I use this when I cold call as well. So for me, it's very much about spiking someone's interest with some results. We want to find out if that's something that they're interested in. But then we don't need to do that now. We want to set a later date, right? So then you have your diary in front of you. You say, all right, well, so let's do, you know, does Tuesday or Thursday next week work better for you? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Yeah. Um, and if they said, look, uh, if they happen to be on the phone and they're ready to talk about it now, would you just go through it? There if and there. have the time, I would, but this can also be, and there's a book I'm reading at the moment, which is called um, Pitch Anything by Oren Plath. And um, it's, it's actually something one of my other coaches suggests too, is that I probably wouldn't because mm -hmm. your time is valuable, right? And you are ringing, you know, you might be ringing five or 10 different clients today. And, you know, it might just be a matter of, you know what, I don't haven't got the time today, but let's book it in for Tuesday if that's okay. You know, I've got a client next. I've got a client coming up in five minutes and I want to be able to honor your time. So, you know, can we book it in for Friday? So yeah. what you're doing is you're taking control of the situation. Yeah. Okay. And this book, like this work with Oren Clark is really fascinating because to, to really influence people, you need to come from that place of authority, that you come from that place of actually, I'm going to take control of this. And I haven't rung you to do that now. You know what? No, I don't want to bother you now. Well, but it's more about, I can't do this now because I've got a client coming up next and I'd love to really honor your time and make sure I've got the time and the space for you. So let's do it on Friday. Yeah. Um, so that would be my suggestion in that space. In okay. the past, would I have gone, yeah, let's do it now? I would have. But I actually think that this is a much better way to take the lead and take control over the situation. And I know that sounds, I don't know about you, but it might sound, when I first listened to and read this work, to me, it was a bit like, oh, like, do I really need to be that one taking control? But the more I do this work, the more I see how powerful it is that you need to be that one taking control. And for a lot of reasons, not just in that sales piece, but when you start working with people, you need to be in that control, right? You need them to know that you can control that environment and you can control the success that they're having. Okay. So it, it pays off down the line. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that would be my suggestion for making those warm calls. But let's be honest, it's going to take practice, right? Yeah. It takes practice of picking the phone up. I wasn't perfect at it either. I don't think there are any salespeople who you know are perfect when you first start. But it's just about making those calls. And sometimes I say to clients, I'm like, pick the people you don't actually want to work with and practice on them. <laughs> or practice on your family and friends, right? So practice your pitch so you get your, your words around it if you've got someone you can feel comfortable with. Okay. I have another question, but I'll, I'll um, ask it at the end if there's um, time. Okay, Thank sure. you. Thanks very much. Right. Does anyone else have a question? Yes, I do. Um, I I do do a lot of phone work. I try and ring people, but my mm -hmm. biggest frustration at the moment is that people don't answer the phone. And so, how much of a message should you leave? Should you just no. say, "Tony, here, give me a call"? No, none. I don't oh, leave no. any messages. No. And I learned that trick. I learned the trick two of them. I learned it while I was working as a sales rep that I don't leave messages. But I didn't actually realize, it didn't come to my, um, I guess, my consciousness of why I didn't leave them until I listened to, there's an incredible podcast by Tony Robbins and Sarah Blakely. If you don't know Sarah Blakely, she's the, um, the Spanx girl. So she invented those, you know, pull up. So she was um, America's or the world's first female self-made billionaire incredible interview but one of the things that she talked about and it really brought it to my consciousness I was like oh that's why so when you leave a message for people you're allowing them to make a decision in that moment about whether they're going to call you back and they make a decision about you I don't want people to make a decision about me over a voice message so I don't leave a message I just keep calling back as soon as it gets to message I hang up 
and I just keep calling back. Eventually they answer, right? And then you have the opportunity to talk to someone, share your wisdom. They get to make a decision there and then. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does because it it is frustrating. frustrating. They don't get back to you. (laughs) Yeah, that's it, right? And then you're thinking, so then you start the whole, oh, they didn't get back to me. Why didn't they get back to me? Do they not want to talk to me? Are they too busy? You know, and then all the stories start in our head. So you're better off just not leaving the message at all. And then and just keep calling. Eventually they'll go, here's this number and they'll answer. So is that? <laughs> yeah. Okay, thanks, Jules. It's been great. I've loved welcome. everything. Oh, good. Anyone else have a question for me? Okay, dokey. So we've just got a couple of minutes left. So we'll do the door, door prize um, in a second. Um, just going back to what you were saying before about with the pricing, a mm-hmm. uh, little tip for everybody is understanding the value of the solution you provide, not by the hour of saying, oh my God, I couldn't, you know, uh, if my package has six one-on-one sessions and I'm $100 an hour, then I should charge $600 for the package. But if the value of the solution you provide, like in your case, Jules, if you're, you know, helping somebody double their revenue and over a year and then the lifetime value of what that problem that solves, You don't want to be charging at the the per hour. Um, So the exercise I use for that is is the juice worth the squeeze and working through for charging the um, value. And it comes back back to the beliefs also uh, around money and about themselves because it's always that underlying self-worth issue that can be coming up there. Alrighty, so we are going to do our lucky door prize how many do we still have left two people had to leave and now ella had to go um oh i've got seven left uh look they stayed for uh, up until the last couple of minutes so let land you want to add them back in just so it's fair because otherwise because i think three of the seven are me jules and you so pop those two back in all right, so what we have for the, um, we have two lucky door prizes. We have uh, a self, uh, I need another coffee, sacred money archetypes assessment, <laughs> where I'll do um, somebody's money personality test um, and a reading uh, on that. So that's a 30 minute session. Um, Jenny, I will send over also the assessment um, to yourself that you asked for. And for Jules, we have a one-hour sales strategy session. That is fantastic for somebody to have a, uh, a bird's-eye view of their business and for you to be able to give them some tips there. So that is absolutely fantastic. And as Jules said, uh, anybody who wants the PDF can also have a copy of that. Um, that would be absolutely amazing. So I will send that over to you. Alrighty. All right. You ready, Leanne, to do your little spinning? Okay. Um, do you want to share your screen? Yep, excellent. Are you guys ready? Yep. I'll spin those <laughs> now. So the first one is for the SMA. Kylie. Congratulations, Kylie. Cool. And we'll respin. Um, maybe then, um, does that automatically take out Kylie? Yes, I remember. Yeah. All right, spinning again. We need a carnival noise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you did the session. Congratulations, <laughs> Danny. Fantastic. Okay, Jenny. Uh, All right, fantastic. So Jules, we will be in touch with with you, Jenny. So congratulations. Um, Kylie, I think I have to jump off. So I will send her the SMA assessment. Thank you, everybody, for coming along. That is fantastic. I hope you all enjoyed it. Um, And I'll send you over uh, everything else, Jules. With the, uh, thing. And thank you so much for your time. That was really valuable. No worries. It was lovely to meet everyone. Okay. 
Speak your mind. Pick up that phone. Puff. Yeah, pick up the phone. <laughs>